In the last tutorial, we learned some basic texturing and UV mapping skills to make models like these. In this tutorial, we will apply these skills, as well as learning some basic modeling techniques, to create models like these. Firstly, we will look at how to recreate this rusted oil can. To start, switch into edit mode. Then, use the scale tool to scale the cube to the rough proportions of the oil can. Then, click here to select the loop cut tool. You can also press Ctrl R to do this. This tool allows us to slice through the model like a cake, creating a set of new edges. Do this in both directions on the top face. As you can see, there is now this plus shape of edges on the top face. Now switch to edge select mode. You can do this by pressing 2, and then select the four corner edges. Then use the scale tool to scale them in, creating this octagonal low poly cylinder. Click here, or press I, to select the inset faces tool. Then switch to face select mode and then select the top four faces. Use this to inset new faces onto the top faces of the model. Finally, select the four inner faces on the top of the model, then click here or press E to select the extrude faces tool. Use this to move these faces downwards, creating the inside of the oil can. For texturing, just follow the same steps as in my previous tutorial. When UV mapping, make sure that you have all the faces adjacent to each other like this, so that the texture appears continuous on the model. When you use Smart Unwrap, this should happen automatically. Next, let's take a look at this traffic cone. Firstly, scale the cube to create the base of the cone. Using the same technique as before, loop cut and then scale the corner edges to create this octagonal shape. Then, use the Inset Faces tool on the top faces of the model to create these inner faces. Then, use the Extrude Faces tool on these inner faces to create the main part of the cone. Select the edges at the top of the model, and then use the Scale tool to bring them in, creating the cone shape. To round out the top slightly, select the top faces and then click here to select the Bevel tool. Then, use this tool to slightly bevel the edges. Finally, for the reflective middle section of the cone, we need to use the Loop Cut tool again. If you use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl R and then scroll, it will increase the number of cuts, splitting the cone into even thirds. Or alternatively, you can click and drag to have more precise control over the placement of your two cuts. When it comes to texturing, the process is similar to the oil can. However, as the cone model uses several different textures, there are a couple of additional steps that we need to take. Here, there's a couple of different approaches you can use. The first would be to place all of your textures onto a single image, and then use a single material, UV mapping the appropriate textures onto the appropriate faces. The other is to use several different materials. For each new material, you need to click the plus button here, and then click new to create a new material. Then, in edit mode, select the appropriate faces, then click assign to assign that material to the faces. Then, just UV map as usual. While the PlayStation did not support specular materials, if you do want to make the reflective part of the cone specular, then it is a requirement to use a separate material for this. Just turn the roughness down and the specular up. That's all for now. Next time we will apply the techniques that we've learned here to create more complex models. If you found this video helpful, then make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.